I don't know how to quantify leadership. What's leadership? Everybody said Derek Jeter had it. A-Rod didn't. Everybody says uh, Magic had it. Yeah, not sure if Kobe did. What is great leadership? I don't know. But I do know what it's not. Yeah, I don't know the healthiest foods in the world, but I know ice cream's not one of them, <laughs> although I love ice cream. Aaron Rodgers, is he a great leader? Well, no, but I'll tell you this. I used to bang on him for being passive aggressive. He's now aggressive. Yeah, he came out. Did you hear him yesterday talking about young wide receivers? He didn't like them. He said they were terrible. He said at one point he called it piss poor. I like that Aaron Rodgers. Again, I don't know what leadership is, but I know what it's not. I know it's not fake. Andrew Luck was drafted. The following two drafts, none of those players remain with the Colts. 30% of them are out of the league. One was an outright bust. Actually, probably four were outright busts. Even the first and second round picks, awful. Okay, I don't know what leadership is, but I know what it's not. I've had a lot of bosses, inauthentic, always taking the blame. This one's on me. I don't buy it. I love that Aaron Rodgers comes out and ripped his young receivers. I love it. By the way, if LeBron did that, would we have a problem? If Greg Popovich came out and ripped a player, would we have a problem? If Steve Kerr came out and ripped somebody, would we have a problem? If Bill Belichick came out, Sean Payton came out and ripped a player, would we have a problem? Then why would I have a problem with the best player, arguably, some would say, no argument, in the NFL, coming out and ripping young teammates? I loved it. You know, there's a bumper sticker. You ever seen those bumper stickers? You're driving around, Joy, and the bumper sticker is, mean people suck. And um, you know the bumper sticker I'd put right next to it? Arrogance isn't, uh, don't, don't, don't confuse standards and arrogance. Okay, standards isn't arrogance. They're standards. A lot of times we think old people, they're just cranky, hey, this airline and this food. No, as people get older, they have seen efficiency. So when they deal with inefficiency, it drives them crazy. One of the great things about doing this business now for 20 plus years, like I've seen really good and I've seen really average and I'm not going to stand for really average anymore and nor should you. Old people aren't just cranky to be cranky, though some probably are, but they've lived a life of seeing efficiency and inefficiency and they don't want to do inefficiency anymore. They've, they've been in a good airline. They've stayed at a good hotel. They've been in a good restaurant with good service or they work with good young receivers who are committed, talented, listen, and are coachable. And so when they're not, Andrew Luck going out and saying, that's on me. I don't know what great leadership is, but I know what it's not. Always taking the blame. Never being demanding. Love the new hyper-aggressive Aaron Rodgers over the formerly passive-aggressive Aaron Rodgers. You ever go to a hotel and um, hotels got those circular mirrors in the bathroom. They're called like vanity mirrors, otherwise known as confidence killers. And you go look in that vanity mirror and it magnifies every blemish, right? So you can have a, a slight imperfection on your skin and it looks like a civil war scar. And you walk around all day thinking, are people looking at that? Are, no, it was a slight skin imperfection. But when you put a microscope on anything, and that's what those bathroom mirrors at a hotel are, they're like microscopes. It makes even a slight imperfection look like a major flaw. I read this morning another article telling me the Dallas Cowboys are doomed. Cole Beasley, it says, Cowboys receivers will shock people because the assumption is they're just awful. No, no. Dallas is in the vanity mirror of the NFL. If I looked at the Cowboys and gave them a report card as a team, offensive line, which to me is the most important unit in the NFL, A+. Plus. Defensive line, they found some good pass rushers, B+. Plus. Running games matter, A+. Plus. Quarterback head coach, good solid B. Linebackers, when Sean Lee is healthy, a very, very nice group. And they, they drafted a young kid who I think could be a star. We just see on Sunday night the Cowboy game all by itself. 
On Monday night football, by itself, we see the Cowboy game. On Thursday night football, do you know why it is? Because every network, CBS, Monday night football, ESPN, Fox Thursday, NBC Sunday night, they want to put the Cowboys on. And they often play as the only game left on television. Thursday by themselves, Monday night by themselves, Sunday night by themselves. That Fox game or that late CBS game, there's usually only one other game being televised in America. Take the Jacksonville Jaguars. Everybody loves the Jacksonville Jaguars. But that, that isn't a vanity mirror. That's the regular mirror where everybody in the right lighting, when you lim, dim the lights a little bit, you go to a hotel bathroom, you dim the lights in the big mirror, everybody looks like a supermodel. You only watched the Jags play twice last year, both times against the Steelers. So you're like, man, Jacksonville, they are unbelievable. Did you watch them play twice against the Titans when they were 0-2 and once got beat 37-16? to And in two games against the Titans, threw for a total of 350 yards? Did you watch them get beaten by the awful New York Jets, the mediocre Arizona Cardinals? The 6-10 and 10 49ers. You didn't see those Jags games. You don't watch the AFC South last year because Deshaun Watson got hurt and six of the eight quarters the Jags faced the Texans. Deshaun Watson didn't play. Tom Savage did. And Andrew Luck got hurt, so you didn't watch it. So they went 4-0 against the Colts and, f- and the Texans. And they're going to go, arguably, in my opinion, 0-4 against them this year. Okay? Dallas won one Less game last year than Jacksonville. Better division. Better conference. When Dallas lost, it was often to quarterbacks who played at a Pro Bowl level. Jared Goff, Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Carson Wentz. Marcus Mariota shredded. (laughs) Shredded the Jags. Josh McCown beat them. Whoever was quarterbacking for Arizona beat them. The Cowboys had one ugly loss all season. Week two, high altitude, went to Denver and vomited for three hours. It was bad. And then they didn't have another one. Cowboys were also missing Zeke, their star running back for multiple games. Tyrod Smith, the best left tackle in football. And linebacker Sean Lee, really the glue to their defense. Okay, don't go to a hotel and look at that vanity mirror and think that's giving you an honest perception of yourself. Your skin is mostly fine. Your eyebrows look good. You're an attractive person, except in the vanity mirror. Okay, that's the Cowboys. If I have to see another Cowboy article, how it's gloom and doom, it's a good football team. Last two years with a baby quarterback, they've won 22 games. Only the Steelers and Patriots have won more. And you're in love with the Jags, who in a division where Andrew Luck and Deshaun Watson got hurt, had a nice 10-win season. One more W than the Dallas Cowboys in the better NFC East and in the significantly deeper NFC. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.